Hello. This is a talk I gave last year in this program, and I have revised it. It is a talk about unity of life. And there is no need to change what I've already said. Just hear it again. I opened it talking about drinking alcohol. There was an article about alcohol in the Atlantic magazine about alcoholic consumption in the United States. And some say alcohol does harm physically, but most say it opens people up to talk and deal with others. The harm rests on how much you drink and some other factors, but the goodness of bringing people out of their smaller world and into the world of others around them makes it all worthwhile. And many ideas would not have been worked out or things discovered if it was not for alcohol. Alcohol suppresses our conscious mind and can unleash creativity and also make us more sociable, according to Dr. Slingerland, who is a professor at the University of British Columbia. He made this point at a talk he gave at Google. And after the talk, his hosts took him over to a, the whiskey room, a lounge with a foot, football table, and what Slingerland described as a blow-your-mind collection of single malt scotches. It was set up so that employees could have a drink or two, speak with others who were there, and enhance their creativity and the ideas they were wrestling with. To me, it is interesting that alcohol can play such a role at Google, as well as in Microsoft, just as the bar in the neighborhood. People are there doing all they can outside of their profession to help them improve inside their profession in their tasks and how they do them. The same person who is an engineer or coder can do more because of this other way of preparing him or herself. Sometimes the funniest and most personable fellow at a party is the fellow who had too much and is fairly tipsy. We see that there is a single person with many aspects and responsibility who wants to do all that he can to be the best in his work and to enjoy it, along with others. And he has a drink to help him get things started. As I said, this talk is on unity of life. Unity means everything we do in life has something to do with everything else we do in life. A person is an individual, a single person, and cannot have two personalities. To have two personalities is called schizophrenia, which means splitting the mind. Two persons cannot function in one body. And yet we do have people who, on purpose, split their minds when it comes to work and to family. Tasks in their office or workshop from the tasks with their children and their family, and above all, with God. They do not have unity of life. Unity of life means that wherever we are, we are one and the same person. And what we do to draw close to God happens wherever we go and in whatever we do, and not just in church or in our home. Once we are out of church, perhaps our mind abandons that religious world and enters into another world of work, recreation, morality, and ideas. In a way, it is the issue we are dealing with today when a person can say that he is personally against abortion, but will do everything he can to support abortion in his hospital, university, Congress, and society in general. The same person splits into two persons with two ways of seeing life, with a different idea about what he or she expects of his children and what he or she expects of others' children. St. Jose Maria Escrivá, the founder of Opus Dei, wrote in a letter in 1932, we must love every type of human work because work is our means for the sanctification of souls and for the glory of God. Our work becomes supernatural because its end is God. And we do our work with him in mind. 
we turn our whole life into God's service, our work and our rest, our tears and our smiles. The biggest part of our day is at work, sometimes 70 or 80 hours a week. After sleeping about seven hours a night, that means we have 119 hours left, of which a good part can go to working in a job that gives us a salary. Perhaps we are not required to spend a lot of time in the office, but thinking, working on the computer, emails, phone calls, all take up time outside of the office time. If you're a doctor or a lawyer, you will have more time available given the nature of the profession. If you are involved with entertainment at any level, especially if you have to work for a news office or meet deadlines for articles or books, you also lose control of schedule. Work has results for the person who does the work and for other persons as well. God made us to work, but that means work should not go against us, even though at times it might happen that way in our society. The prelate of Opus Dei, Don Fernando Ocaris, recently said, work holds a very important place in the sanctification of ordinary life, not only because of the time we spend working, which is a lot, but still more because of its results for the person who does the work and for other people. Work is a central part of the universal call to holiness. Important sentence. Work is a central part of the universal call to holiness. This is revealed by God's plan for mankind as narrated in Genesis, right at the beginning of the Bible. There we learn that the word is characterized by its fundamental relationship with God and that the creation of the first man and woman was oriented to the forming of the family, increase and multiply, God says, and to working. Work and the family together with the relationship with God are, so to speak, the pillars that support God's plan for mankind. When I enter my workplace, whatever place it may be according to my profession, I am still the same person. I have always been with the same husband, children, life of prayer, struggle for virtue, and challenges from temptations. We might see this as we spent so much time working at home in the last few years during COVID, dressed as if we were at home, but working as if we are on Wall Street. The children's needs become more evident because we are taking care of them and they are not in a child care center or staying with our parents or some other relatives. I am sure that a number of mothers, at least that I know, after being at home, begin to think more seriously about how to continue working at home now that they know that they can do it. A good number may quit their jobs and look for a job where they will be able to work at home and spend more time with their children. More than ever, we see how our life is unified by the experience of a pandemic. That we that may that may be why it is slow for people to return to work, because they are waiting for the right situation in their job. Data from an April 2022 survey showed that 77% of companies have already opted to go hybrid. 77% of companies, it's a lot. What's more, 56% of those companies are allowing employees to choose when and how often they wish to come into the office. It is clear that the hybrid model will be the new way to determine hours of work in most workplaces. Living outside of the work situation of nine to five 40 hour work week, which is what arose through industrialization and factories and things like that, we might be able to pray more as we escape that. We perhaps may see more things in our home to remind us that we will not find in a laboratory or an office or a classroom, such as 
in our house a crucifix or pictures of Our Lady or St. Joseph on the shelf in a room, even right next to the screen where we work all day. We could do the same at the office if we wanted to, to pray to God, but we might have to put up with some nonsense about how we are turning our desk into some kind of a shrine. But maybe it is a shrine. We want to make our work into prayer and to make our prayer through our work. We can do it in the nursery, praying over a child or before a meal at home by saying grace. But maybe our desk or operating table or factory spot is a kind of altar, a place where the stuff we are doing is a sacrifice we carry out with the supernatural motive of giving our life, our work, our dreams, our successes, our failures as something to offer to God. I may work for money, but I'm also working to give God glory. At home, I might take a break, pick up a rosary, walk around the house or in the yard or down the street and pray it, or at least pray one decade. Maybe I'm not disposed to pray a whole rosary. Maybe I don't have time to pray a whole rosary. No one will know, except perhaps my children, who will see it and learn maybe and pray with me. And maybe my husband will also learn when he sees it, or maybe he is in the same boat, and we can pray a decade together. The husband and wife can eat lunch or dinner together, including with the children. Our atmosphere is totally different, but the work we are accomplishing is the same, maybe even better. Our work is for the love of God wherever we do it. We do it for love of God and to serve the others around us in our society and company. And then we do it for a paycheck. We will be more conscious of doing things well as a way to offer a good and well done gift to God by finishing our work well, moving on to the next task. We might open a task with a, a short word to God and when we finish it, we can thank God. When we are struggling to figure something out, we can ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. Even though we are struggling with writing out a text of advertising or working on some accounting numbers, he will guide us in anything we do. God is interested in all that we do, just as we're interested in all that our children do or husband or friends may be doing. Maybe that's why we have such an extraordinary amount of texting taking place in the world today. What is the best procedure for going ahead on a project that I'm about to perform that may be even a little bit complex at a refinery or some kind of a factory? What is the best way to code a particular program that I'm working on? How should I set up this class to teach eighth graders something about algebra? We belong to God and God will help us even in these non-religious questions. My mother's favorite prayer was, God, give me patience. And she had five kids, so she really meant it as a prayer. Think about how Jesus and Joseph Joseph worked all day in a carpenter shop for 30 years or more. They loved their work, did it well. There was probably plenty of work for carpenters in those days because they were rebuilding cities under King Herod. And the two of them, Joseph and Jesus, probably would go to Sepphoris, a few miles from Nazareth, where there was lots of work. And both were known as outstanding carpenters. Jesus was the redeemer and his redemption was completed on the cross, but it began the day he was born and during all those hours of work as a carpenter, the redemption was taking place. That was part of what a Jewish man did, praying five times a day, but Jesus prayed all the time in his work, even when he and Joseph would talk about the work they were doing, planning a project, or talked about other things to entertain each other, about what was going on. Perhaps other people came into the shop to work with them, sometimes to work on the same project with them, other times just to watch them work, because they like to watch good people work. There's a good book to read by Mike Aquilina called St. Joseph and His World, published by Scepter Press. 
short and direct, but full of content and ideas about the Holy Family in their ordinary life, dealing with sometimes extraordinary events. You might want to read it. People love to work with Joseph. Jo Jesus was learning quickly to be a good carpenter, and people love to work with both of them. They were smart and quick, but they had patience and they were helpful with all the others they worked with, even perhaps the people that were not good workers. They knew how to deal with them. People learned from them and even just liked to go by the shop and watch them. They were not pushy men, telling people how to do things right away, ordering people around, no. They were wonderful individuals, two men that people looked up to, who knew how to do everything better than everyone else, even though they didn't make a big deal about it. And people saw that. Mary's work, often with other women, was also outstanding. Our Lord and Joseph were extremely well cared for by her cooking, the vegetables she raised from her garden, the clothing she made for them, the comfort of a home that was pleasant with her laughter and showing them how much she loved them. She prepared great meals, hauled the water up from the town well, and knew how to arrange the fire in her stove. She knew how to make the home in Nazareth a pleasant place as a wonderful home. Unity of life means we have to bring all these things into one person that each of us is. Humans have many things in common, but each of us also has his or her own things, experiences that we have to respect in others, and even their defects. Some days, some of us have moods. Some of us get easily angry or we are ready to criticize others. These are shortcomings that we have to work on all the time, not just in the workplace, but all the time. And we all have our own experience in life, including in our interior life, our prayer life, about what God shows us in our prayer, or when we receive him in Holy Communion, or when we read something about Christ that moves our soul and wakes us up about who we are and our own personal relationship with God. You notice this especially as you get older. Holiness is belonging to God. Is there a way we can belong to God and at the same time not belong to God? I don't think so. Once we strive for holiness, which we must all strive for, and we belong to God, it unites us in everything else we do because it all becomes part of that struggle to belong to God in every detail of our lives. When we go to a salaried position, we belong to God. And we have to find a way to remember that and keep that alive in the world that is basically now away from God. We live in Gnostic times. Gnostic means the new age, which separates matter from spirit. In Gnostic times, people want to know about God, which they think makes them good and holy, but then they end up doing whatever they want, however immoral, because they know God in some way and think they're holy because of that, but they do not belong to God. They can enter into adultery, use of drugs or alcohol, stealing, lying, cheating, and for them, it does not affect their holiness. They think it doesn't. They think that somehow they're still good. But they are not belonging to God when they follow those footsteps. They have to know him and think that they have to follow him and do whatever he wants, not what they want. That's being a follower of Christ, following in his footsteps. Unity of life makes us work to draw all we do into a prayer. And in whatever we are trying to do, we pray not out loud in our mind because we are busy solving a problem. Manual work, we can talk to God as we work. But if we are working on statistics or working out a chemistry problem or planning a meeting, then we cannot speak to God in an out loud kind of way. But he knows we're doing it for him and he's trying to help us to do it well. We may have given some advice or helped someone get through a painful experience in life. And we wonder where we got the words and the gestures to do it. That's the Holy Spirit. 
in confession, I say things to penitence, and I am not sure where the ideas came from. But I am sure it is from the Holy Spirit. When I walk along Lexington Avenue, or 3rd Avenue, here in Manhattan, dressed in black, wearing a Roman collar, everyone knows that I am a Christian, and, and they come to me for advice, or usually just to ask for money. Uh, sometimes they do think I might be a rabbi or a minister or whatever, because it's New York City. But most people know that I'm a Christian because I'm dressed as a priest. I can't hide, hide the fact that I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And that's part of exercising the ministerial priesthood of Christ as a minister of Christ. But that should happen to all of us because we all share in the common priesthood of Christ that we received at baptism. In our work as an engineer or a salesman or a lawyer or a doctor or a nurse, people know that we are serious about our faith. And when they have a problem in their family or with their children or spouse, they will come to us with trust because they know we are followers of Christ. People know we are followers of Christ, the way we celebrate Christmas and Easter, that our children are baptized, receive First Holy Communion or Confirmation. They know that we try to get to Mass every Sunday, and they see our Christianity in our judgments at work. The fact that we do not gossip about people, that we work hard, we want to get things done well and finish them, that we pray for people who are sick or who have died, some words of St. Jose Maria Escrivá in a book that he wrote with short ideas. He says, every environment is such an influence, you've said to me. And I have had to answer, no doubt. That's why you have to be formed in such a way that you can carry out your own environment about with you in a natural manner and so give your own tone to the society in which you live. And then when you've acquired this spirit, I'm sure you'll tell me with all amazement of the early disciples, as they contemplated the first fruits of the miracles performed by their hands in Christ's name. How great is our influence on our environment. Unity of life will help bring the world together. And if we all struggle to live this unity in Christ and with one another by the power of the Holy Spirit, we could change the world. We would solve many problems in the world and stay calm and peaceful, even in moments when some people get angry and rebellious. We would all work together to bring justice to every country and every nation, which would be the main step to end war and conflict. We would be able to conquer the world and bring all of us, or at least most of us, to live by justice and charity rather than selfishness and greediness. The world already belongs to God. Now, we must help those around us to remember that, and it will change their vision of life and love. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope this will be of help to you. Um, in the meantime, God bless you, and I will see you again.